Review of the model of supply and demand. The model of supply and demand is just a simplification of reality. It examines the relationship between buyers and sellers in a market, and most importantly, it's a model of price and quantity exchange determination. Now, although the model of supply and demand is restrictive, there's lots of assumptions behind it, it's still a very useful benchmark in predicting changes in quantities and prices in a variety of markets. And of course, it consists of demand and supply. Demand for a good is a relationship showing that quantity demanded, Q sub D, depends on the price of the good, P, amongst many other variables. Supply of a good is a relationship showing that quantity supplied, Q sub S, depends on the price of the good, P, amongst other variables. Recall that when we graph supply and demand curves, we put price on the y-axis and quantity on the x-axis. What exactly is a demand curve? Well, it's just a curve that shows the relationship between the price of a product and the quantity demanded at a particular price. It illustrates the law of demand, which is a rule that ceteris paribus, holding every other factor or variable constant, increases in price cause decreases in the quantity demanded and vice versa. So for example, when the price falls from $700 to $600, quantity demanded rises from 3 to 4 million. The supply curve is a curve that shows the relationship between the price of a product and the quantity of the product supplied at a particular price. And it illustrates the law of supply, which is the rule that ceteris paribus, holding everything else constant, increases in price cause increases in the quantity supplied and vice versa. For example, when the price of a tablet increases from $300 to $400, the quantity supplied of that tablet increases from 3 to 4 million. Now putting supply and demand together, their interaction creates a market equilibrium, which is a situation in which the price in the market is such that quantity demanded equals quantity supplied. And there's two parts to a market equilibrium. There's an equilibrium price, P star, which is the price at which the market equilibrium takes place. There's the equilibrium quantity, Q star, which is the quantity exchanged at the equilibrium price. So you see here a graph of uh, supply and demand. An equilibrium occurs at $500 and 5 million tablets. Now beyond every supply and demand curve is an equation, which means that when we're looking at a supply and demand uh, problem, we have two equations, supply equation and demand equation, and two unknowns, or two variables, price and quantity. So this market equilibrium, this Q star, P star, as it's often denoted, is that unique ordered pair, the solution, that solves both of these equations simultaneously. So the thing to remember is that at every point, every ordered pair along the supply curve solves the su supply equation, and every point or ordered pair along the demand curve solves the demand equation. So finding a market equilibrium is just trying to find that one unique ordered pair that solves both of the equations at the same time. Application, quantitative supply and demand analysis. So on the demand side, we have this relationship between price and the quantity demanded, and it can be represented in a variety of ways, verbally, through the law of demand, through a table, which is called a demand schedule. You've seen a lot of those in your principal's courses, graphically with a demand curve, you're familiar with those, and mathematically, which is called a demand equation or demand function. So you'll normally see a simple linear demand equation or function written as Q sub D is equal to A minus B times P, where A and B are constants. Other times you'll see this general notation, and I'll give an example later on, where you're just giving Q sub D parentheses P parentheses, which is not read as Q sub D times P. This is read as quantity demanded depends on price, or quantity demanded is a function of price. But we know that a lot of things other than price influence quantity demanded. Income, prices of related goods, tastes or preferences, population and demographics, and expected future prices. So a more complete demand equation may include one, two, or all of these sorts of things. And you may see it written as this, which just says that quantity demanded depends on price, but it also depends on income, the prices of other goods, 
tastes, population demographics, and expected future prices. So what exactly is a demand function? A demand function, by definition, is just an equation that shows a relationship between the quantity demanded of a good, its price, and any of those other determining factors. For example, this is what's called general notation, or general functional notation. Sometimes you'll just be told Q sub D is equal to Q sub D parentheses P parentheses, which is just read, quantity demanded depends on price. Or, you're probably familiar with this linear equation, single variable. All this says is that quantity demanded just depends on price in this particular way. And sometimes you'll be given multivariable equations. In this example, quantity demanded depends on price and income. Now, a lot of the times your instructors will ask you to figure out what the inverse demand function is. And the inverse demand function is an equation that shows a relationship between the price of a good, its quantity demanded, and any other determining factors. Very simply, all an inverse demand function is, is a demand relationship, but it has price on the left-hand side of the equal sign and everything else on the other side. So for example, we had, with general notation, Q sub D was a function of P, or Q sub D depended on P. When we rearrange this equation to solve for the inverse equation, or inverse demand function, we'll come up with something like P depends on Q sub D. Example 2 and example 3 will uh, make this more concrete. So initially we had a demand curve, Q sub D is equal to 100 minus 5P. An inverse demand curve would uh, make us rearrange the equation and solve for P. So an inverse demand curve that represents this is P is equal to 20 minus 1 fifth times QD. And we can still do it with multivariable functions, we just need to get P on that left hand side. So the inverse demand function that corresponds to that third demand function would be P is equal to 20 plus 2 fifths times Y minus 1 fifth times QD. Now when we graph a demand curve, we graph it just like any linear equation. We find two points and we connect them. For example, suppose Y income is equal to 10. Graph the demand curve given by the inverse demand equation P is equal to 20 minus 1 fifth Q sub D plus two-fifths y. Now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to simplify this equation. I can only graph something if there's two variables. So I'm going to plug in that y. And when I do, I come up with my demand function, p is equal to 24 minus one-fifth q sub d. Now I'm going to find the vertical and horizontal intercepts. Vertical intercepts real easy to see. This equation is already in y equals mx plus b form. I know the vertical intercept then is 0, 24. The horizontal intercept is going to be 120, 0. And you can verify this by plugging in 0 for P and solving for Q sub D. So I've got my two points and I can connect them. And I come up with my downward sloping demand curve. Now we can look at the supply side. Supply is just the relationship between price and quantity supplied. And this can be represented verbally by the law of supply via a table, the supply schedule graphically with the supply curve, or mathematically with the supply equation. For example, Q sub S depends on price. Or, more specifically, Q sub S, quantity supplied, is equal to 2 times P. But again, we know lots of things influence quantity supplied, not just price. There's prices of inputs or there's factors of production. Technological change. Numbers of firms in the market and expected future prices. So a more complete supply equation or supply function may look like this. The quantity supplied of a good depends on its price, wages, rental rates, technology, which is A, number of firms, which is C, and expected future prices, which is E, parentheses, P, parentheses. What exactly is a supply function? It's just an equation that shows the relationship between the quantity supplied of a good its price and any other determining factors. So we can write a supply function in general notation. And this is a good word for it, right? This is just very general. Quantity supply depends on price somehow. I don't know specifically. With example two, it's a little bit more specific. Single variable. Quantity supply depends on price. Quantity supplied is equal to five-fourths price. And then example three is multivariable. It's a little bit more realistic. Quantity supply depends on price and wage, W. 
Specifically, quantity supplied is equal to 5 fourths P minus 1 15 W. An inverse supply function is an equation that shows a relationship between the price of a good, its quantity supplied, and any other determining factors. So when you're asked to solve for an inverse supply function, all you need to do is put price on the left-hand side of the equation and everything else on the right-hand side. So let's look at our examples. For the first one, we initially had Q sub S dependent on P when we would rearrange things. We would come out with the inverse supply function P depends on Q sub S. With example two, we initially had that quantity supplied was equal to 5 fourths P. With a little algebraic manipulation, we get price is equal to 4 fifths Q sub S. And then finally, multivariable equation. We initially had that quantity supplied was equal to 5 fourths P minus 1 15th W. When we rearrange using algebra, we come up with our inverse supply function. P is equal to 4 fifths Q sub S plus 1 15th W. And graphing a supply curve is just like graphing any linear equation. Let me be clear, graphing a linear supply curve is just like graphing any linear equation. We're just going to find two points and connect them. So for example, let the wage rate equal 30. Graph the supply curve given by the inverse supply function, P is equal to 4 fifths Q sub S plus 1 15th W. So the first thing I'm going to need to do is simplify this equation with the given information. I'm told that W is equal to 30. I'm going to plug that guy in. I don't know why I have double P, P equals P. Sorry about that. But I'm going to plug that W equals 30 in. I'm going to simplify and I get that P is equal to 2 plus 4 fifths QS. So now I need to find my vertical and horizontal intercepts or really any two points. My vertical intercepts, easy to see, that's going to be 0, 2. And my horizontal intercept is going to be negative 2.50, which I'm not even going to show on this graph. So there's my supply curve. Now let's move on to market equilibrium. Suppose you're asked to do the following. Solve the market equilibrium Q star P star that solves the following systems of equations. So you're given a supply equation, you're given a demand equation. And in fact, they're already in inverse form, which is nice. Solving for a market equilibrium is no different than solving two systems, is, is no different than solving a system of two equations and two unknowns. So we're going to go through the substitution method. Remember, in one of the previous presentations, you had this list of steps that you could follow to use a substitution method. We'll go through each step in turn. And note, with supply and demand, we know that in equilibrium, by its definition, that quantity demanded equals quantity supplied. So what we'll do is just rewrite the equations in terms of Q. So the first step, choose an equation and solve for a specified variable. Well, it looks like it's already been done for us. Both, equa both equations are already solved for P. And most of the time, you're going to be able to skip this step. Second, substitute the expression found in step one into the other equation. Well, both of them are already solved for P, so we can use either one. What we should end up getting is an equation, one equation with one variable. And we do 24 minus 1 fifth Q is equal to 2 plus 4 fifths Q. I move on to step 3. Solve for the new variable, in this case Q, from step 2. Put a star above to denote this as a solution. So I can use some algebraic manipulation and solve for Q star. And I come up with Q star is equal to 22. Now I like to combine steps 4, 5, and 6. 4 says back substitute the value found in 3, i.e. that Q star, into one of the equations. This will result in an equation with one variable. You solve for the new variable from 4. Put a star above it to denote this as a solution. Then you check your proposed solution by substituting in both equations. What I like to do is just take that Q star and plug it in to both supply and demand and see if I get the same number. And I do. When I use the supply equation, P star is equal to 2 plus 4 fifths times that Q star, 22, I get 19.6. I could have used the demand equation, get P star is equal to 24 minus 1 fifth times Q star, and that comes out to be 19.6 as well. So I know I did my math right. And this is just a graphical representation of it. This formally ordered pair, Q star, P star, that solves this system of equations is 22 
19.6. Comparative statics analysis. Recap. Many economic models are characterized by many equations and many variables. Solving a system of equations in two equations with two variables means finding a solution in ordered pair that fits both of the equations at the same time, finding the point on a graph where the two curves intersect, and finding the equilibrium of a model. All of these are the same thing. Now the neat thing is that once we f figure out an equilibrium, we can vary these outside exogenous variables and see how the equilibrium, i.e. the solution, changes. So remember, we're often interested in how a change in one variable leads to a change in another. Now this process is known as comparative statics analysis. In other words, it's just analyzing how equilibrium changes when an outside or exogenous variable changes. Let's just go through a graphical interpretation of comparative statics analysis. The model of supply and demand has an equilibrium price where the quantity demanded of the good is equal to the quantity supplied. So we see this here on the graph. At this equilibrium, there's no incentive for buyers or firms to change their behavior. This is what an equilibrium is. Now, what if average incomes fell and the good is a normal good? And it's okay if you don't know what a normal good is. A normal good by definition is one for which when income increases, the demand for that good increases. So if income falls and the good's normal, we would expect the demand curve to shift to the left. It would fall. Comparing the new equilibrium with the old is just conducting a comparative statics analysis. So to examine how a change in one variable, for example income, affects another variable, p star, q star, economists will use comparative statics. So in such an analysis, what you need to do is first determine the equilibrium of a model. You know how to do that. Change one of the outside variables. Determine the new equilibrium of the model, which is something you know how to do. And then just compare the equilibrium from one, that old equilibrium, to the new equilibrium in three.